a biggie, uh, if, if the story's true. Uh, and I think in the next few days, we're, we're not only going to learn who this presenter is, uh, but also the BBC's going... It looks like the BBC's in a lot of trouble because the mother of the uh, teenager, and it's not clear whether it's a male or female teenager, yes. uh, says they have complained to the BBC. Well, what happened to that complaint... Was it followed up? It, it, clear, it, it appears not to have been. Mm. And so the BBC is going to be in trouble uh, for that, uh, for, not, for not responding. And it's got history because of Savile and Rolf Indeed. Harris and Stuart Hall. And, so and, and that, was the pattern, that was the pattern that we saw then, yes. Um, how damaging do you think it is? Well, it, it, it's hugely damaging. I think it's, it's bigger than most of the BBC scan. I mean, there is a BBC scandal every year or so yes. these days, but I think it's bigger than, uh, than, than nearly all of them. a household name. Yeah. Now, let's uh, move on to another household name, at least in Tory politics. We're calling this Just Stop Oil stunt of the week. What do we make? I know you know the bride in, in this, this case. So, <laughs> Thea Rogers, I think, used to be one of your producers. That's right. She's married George Osborne yesterday. Lovely ceremony, but it gets disrupted by a Just Stop Oil protester. Yeah, no, Thea, Thea used to work for me when I was on Newsnight and um, uh, worked with me, uh, and she was a brilliant producer. Uh, uh, but after a few weeks, she was, she was poached uh, by Nick Robinson, who I see was, uh, was a guest at the wedding oh, yesterday. Lovely. Very good. And, uh, yeah, I mean... There's a, there's a woman here, look, it looks quite an elderly woman, actually, uh, at throwing uh, orange f uh, confetti. Yeah, I mean, it's at, only confetti. Yeah, and, and she have been I think there? the papers have made a bit too much of this. Uh, it's not the worst in the thing in the world. But he's not a member of government. I he's mean, not he's a member of government. The trouble, the, if you have a rural wedding like that, though, it is a, quite a public event. You know, people yes. gather around, the, the people from the community, there were lots of cameras there, lots of press there. Um, and, of course, they've also suffered which is, I think, is much more yeah. serious. This email has went out to all the wedding guests yes, the in recent days. Email, uh, the contents uh, of which we can't really discuss. No, but all sorts of stuff about their uh, private lives, basically. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Do you think it's damaging for Labour to be associated with Dale Vince, who's given them money but is also a backer of Just Stop Oil? Well, this is the, the basic problem Labour has. That to, to many Labour supporters... Uh, you know, sort of the middle class ones from the kind of seats that are trying to win, in, win, win back in the South, they may not be so worried about that. But what, what Labour also has to bear in mind is the, the, the red wall seats, the working class seats in the Midlands and the North and so on, yeah. where, where that may be a, a problem. So I think there, there are mixed, view, mixed views on that. Let's look at the bank ban latest. Obviously, it's an issue close to my fellow GB News presenter Nigel Farage's heart because he's had his uh, banking completely um, interfered with. He's not able to open a bank account with Coots anymore because they've banned him. We now hear from the Sunday Express, woke banks are risk to national security. We also hear that even the Chancellor, according to the Sunday Telegraph, had been denied a bank account. This is becoming... I thought this story would sort of be a one-person story and it would just dampen down... We've heard from people who have gender-critical views who have been banned from a bank account. Now the Chancellor... The former Defense Chancellor, Covenant. Ken Clark. Yes, uh, that's uh, astonishing. Uh, and, and lots of members of the House of Lords. And if there are all these bigwigs, all these establishment figures who are, are being... Uh, well, Farage isn't really an establishment figure. He might like to be. But and if they're the all being stopped, prevented from having bank accounts, then... What's it like for the general public? And this is in a world where it's increasingly difficult to operate these days uh, unless you've got bank accounts, unless you've got credit cards. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of payments you can't make with cash well, anymore, as indeed GB News has been campaigning on that. Campaigning. This, not, this is a very cash. serious issue, and I think the government really needs to... Parliament needs to investigate. And, you know, maybe, uh, as last resort, the Bank of England needs to start providing bank busy, accounts, personal bank too accounts. They're busy replacing their boilers with heat pumps <laughs> and saying that men can get pregnant at the moment, Michael, to be concerning themselves <laughs> with that. Um, let's talk about Blue Labour, because the Times front page is interesting. Labour mirrors Tory spending plans. This is a bit of an odd way to campaign. It is, but that's the way that campaigning happens in this country these days. It happened way back in 1997, you'll remember, when Tony Blair was trying to get back into government, get into government, and successfully did, and Labour committed themselves to Ken Clark's spending plans. And afterwards, Ken Clark said, 
They were bonkers. I wasn't going to stick to those spending plans myself. (laughs) Now, the situation may be slightly different. And, of course, the Conservatives, when they were in opposition uh, 20 years ago, they committed to Labour's spending plans for quite a long time. The election that looks at both parties and says there isn't really a flag paper between them. There's no jeopardy now in the Tories saying, oh, don't vote for Labour, they're going to spend more of your money. They're taxing us to the hilt. And then there's another story in the Sunday Sunday Times about how, uh, uh, you know... uh, uh, Starmer saying he doesn't like, uh, what's the, uh, I'm not interested in tree huggers. Oh, in fact, yes. I hate them. Apparently, apparently that's he's... a discussion with Ed Miliband. That's he right. The, uh... Mr. Tree Hugger, isn't he? I, I mean, here is Labour really trying to make it look like it's not really, <laughs> he's not really, it's a very, it's a repeat of the, 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 the new Labour strategy from 25 years ago, which of course was very successful. Do you think uh, it'll work again, Michael? Well, it looks like it's working. Um, Starmer, Starmer is not Starmer a Tony Blair, Blair yeah. you know, and of course Starmer was meeting Rupert Murdoch the other day, just as, oh, as, yes. as Blair all did all those that. years they ago. We'll do that, <laughs> what they say about it. Let's look at the by-elections then, yeah. because we've had a uh, the archetypal photograph of a Prime Minister hugging a baby, well, almost hugging a baby, looking at a baby. He's gone up to Selby. I mean, he needs to because it looks like the Tories... Do you think they might lose all these by-elections? I think they will lose all these by-elections. Really? Well, we've got three scheduled at the moment, haven't we? Selby and uh, Uxbridge uh, and uh, Somerton and Frome, yes. uh, which is uh, uh, the Lib Dems are, are hoping Wait to take that. Mid-beds because Nadine is... Well, I don't, I don't think that by-election will ever happen. I think she will carry on until the general election. And then we're also waiting on Chris Pincher potentially freeing up his seat. In, in Tamworth, yeah. yeah. Um, but the, the three that are taking place on July the 20th, I think that is going to be three defeats for... Uh, the cons- I think actually the best Conservatives' best hope, I think, ironically, although it, it, is Oxbridge, even though the, the margin for Labour is less. Well, because Oxbridge is complicated. Um, There's an at- interestingly named Labour candidate for Oxbridge, I understand. Uh, Are we not allowed to talk We're not allowed to name we, candidates, no. no. no and and, and also the, the whole ULES policy, the uh, ultra-low emission zone policy, which yeah. is put forward by Sadiq Khan and both Keir Starmer and the party in Oxbridge yeah, have disowned that. it. Yes. By the way, if we name one candidate, we have to name them all and we don't have time. That's, That's right. <laughs> um, and I've got Moss Hussein coming in. I mean, a ULES might be a big issue. But in general, I mean, seeing Rishi Sunak going to Selby, is that a sign of desperation? No. The Prime Ministers, you always used to go and campaign in by-elections? They did, up until about 20 years ago, they didn't. And then Tony Blair started it, funnily enough, in Oxbridge, after his 97 election victory, with a majority of 176, he got greedy. He, he decided he wanted to increase the majority by another two. So he went and campaigned in Uxbridge. David Cameron campaigned five times in um, Rochester and Strood. So it is... Uh, these days, prime ministers do campaign in by-elections. And, of course... Uh, you've got to remember that uh, Rishi Sunak is a Yorkshire MP and this yes. is taking yeah, a it's North Yorkshire actually, MP to and it's, fair, it's, yes, it's he, fairly local he's too. He's in that northern Richmond, not the <laughs> southern one. And just a final word, please, on Nadim Zahawi. What is he doing in a sentence? Michael? This is extraordinary. We haven't heard from the former Chancellor Nadim Zahawi um, since he was... Uh, pushed out of government by, by a scandal. Well, but... he did back Daniel Korski literally an hour before Daniel Korski stood down. But anyway, carry on. And, and uh, he's now appearing in, a, in an ITV drama about the post office scandal, the post office postmaster scandal that ITV are doing, playing himself, oh. a backbench MP. An interesting segue career-wise. <laughs> we, we wait well, it's a sign. Press. It's a sign that all these Conservative MPs really haven't got enough to do at Westminster, and they're going off and doing other things, like being GB News presenters. Well, nothing wrong with that, Michael. <laughs> nothing wrong with that Well, I don't all. know. <laughs>